little music to sit by the window and watch the wind blow the snow around the pavement. I'm a little sad, a little hopeful. Well, if you're watching this on Wednesday, February 17th, uh, it is Ash Wednesday, the first day of Lent, according to the Christian liturgical calendar. And why is this day Ash Wednesday? Well, Easter is on April 4th this year, so you count back six Sundays and, and 40 weekdays, and here we are. Well, why is Easter on April 4th this year? You know, the, the vernal equinox, the first full moon, yada, 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 April 4th. The 40 days uh, comes from the biblical number of days that Jesus fasted in the desert before he began his ministry in Galilee. And we'll have a closer look at uh, that scripture on Sunday. The six Sundays are considered little Easter's, so they're not part of the 40 days count. You don't have to uh, fast on the Sundays. That Mark, Matthew, and Luke all say that Jesus fasted for 40 days is absolutely no surprise because 40 days of probation or trial or fasting were already a thing in the Hebrew Bible. The very Hebrews who wandered in the desert for 40 years. For example, Noah's flood was caused by 40 days and 40 nights of rain. Moses was on Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, waiting for the stone tablets of the Ten Commandments, you know, so he could carry them down to the Israelites. The Israelite spies took 40 days to case the land of Canaan before invading it. In the book of Joshua, the Philistine Goliath taunted Saul's Israelite army for 40 days before young David arrived to knock him down with a slingshot. And when the despondent prophet Elijah ran from Israel's Baal-worshipping Queen Jezebel, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights with no food at all to a cave on Mount Horeb until he heard the still, small voice of God underneath the earthquake, wind, and fire. So on and on with the 40 days of trial or probation or fasting. But let's face it, uh, all of this seems kind of irrelevant this year, doesn't it? I mean, last year's Lent never quite gave way to Palm Sunday, Holy Week, Easter, Pentecost, Summer, Advent, or Christmas. Sure, we did the videos and all, but it wasn't the same. It's been Lent for 340 days since we last met in the sanctuary on March 15th, 2020 which was the third Sunday of Lent that year, we have all been in Lenten isolation, fasting, praying, repenting behind our multi-layered masks for almost a year, shaking no hands, hugging no one outside our bubbles, living these lonely, Lenten, almost monastic lives. Ash Wednesday is also just a bit irrelevant this year because Ash Wednesday is all about physicality and its impermanence. I mean, the, the, the ashes, the fragile ashes on the forehead. Remember you are dust and to dust you shall return, the Roman Catholics say in their morning services. The intentional physical writing down of the obstacles to our God connection and then tossing the slips of paper into a burning urn watching and smelling the smoke as it rises unread to heaven, feeling the heat of the flame and the grit and the grease of the ashes made from the previous year's palms. Well, you know, there, there were no palms last year, and there's hardly any need for ash crosses on our foreheads to remind us of our mortality these days. We're reminded of mortality every time we turn on the news to hear the grim arithmetic of COVID-19 deaths. We human beings know that we're going to die someday in, in a way that animals don't seem to know. And the sadness of knowing that leaks out sometimes. 
but we also know something else, don't we? Let me get at what that something else is with a story that most of us read in junior high or high school, I'm guessing, maybe even younger than that. We read it in Boy Scouts uh, back in the early 60s. The abysmally frigid temperatures over the past few weeks, the, the heat in our little townhouse here failing for a couple of days last week. My car stalled on the yellowhead in minus 30 degree weather all worked together to remind a buddy of mine in Oregon that I was relating these brutal incidents to of the old Jack London story, To Build a Fire. Set in the Yukon Territory in 1908, the story begins, Day had broken cold and gray, exceedingly cold and gray. The story is this, a man new to the Yukon, unnamed, sets out to hike through the forest on a winter day when the temperature is 75 below zero Fahrenheit, which is the only scale they had back then. He ignores, warring, uh, ignores warnings from an old timer on Sulphur Creek against traveling alone in that kind of cold. And so he set out with his large husky dog. Now the dog knows how dumb this is, but reluctantly follows the man. As they follow the course of a frozen creek, the man is careful to avoid patches of thin ice hidden by the snow. His goal is to reach a group of prospectors, referred to as the boys, at their camp by six o'clock that evening. In the early afternoon, the man stops and builds a fire so he can warm up and heat his uh, eat his lunch. And shortly after resuming his hike, he accidentally breaks through uh, a sheet of ice and soaks his feet and ankles, forcing him to stop and build another fire so he can dry out. Well, he picks a spot under the tree uh, for this fire, and he pulls kindling from the brush fire around it to feed the flames. But doing that causes all the snow to cascade from the branches overhead and put out this second fire. And the man quickly begins to lose sensations in his hands and feet, and he hurries to light yet another fire. He lights this new fire using all of his matches and burning himself because of the numbness in his hands. And while he's trying to remove a piece of moss from the fire, the man inadvertently pokes the burning twigs apart and they go out. So with no way to start another fire, the man thinks of killing the dog and using its body heat to save himself, but there's no way to do that. The dog runs from him and his hands are so stiff that he can't hold his knife to cut the dog's throat even if he could catch it. So finally, he tries to restore his circulation by running toward the camp, but he stumbles and falls several times. The blood was alive like the dog, London writes, and like the dog it wanted to hide away and cover itself up from the fearful cold. Finally, lying in the snow, the man feels the cold freezing him to his core, and he ultimately falls asleep and dies of hypothermia. Freezing was not so bad as people thought, the man thinks. There are a lot worse ways to die. And he pictures the boys finding his body the next day. He finds himself with them, coming along the trail and looking for the body. As London put it, he doesn't belong with himself anymore, for even then he was out of himself, standing with the boys and looking at himself in the snow. He drifts on from this to a vision of the old timer on Sulphur Creek, and he sees him quite clearly, warm and comfortable and smoking a pipe. Story ends with the dog trotting off to be with other human beings that might be able to offer him food and warmth. 
Well, my 15 minutes out in the frigid uh, yellowhead with no heated home to come back to, well, you know, weren't quite that bad. But it reminded me of how fragile our systems of civilization really are and how close we really are to nature swallowing us up. Ash Wednesday is celebrated to keep that fact in front of us, whether we need it or not. But Jack London's depiction of the man's frozen and utterly peaceful death, that's the something else that we humans know. We know, somehow, that the physical body isn't all there is. That when our bodies are no longer fit to hold our spirits, when we no longer belong with ourselves anymore, as London put it, no longer attached to our egos, well, what language can we borrow to describe that? Jesus really struggled with it. Well, in the meantime, as the thermometer pulls itself out of the frozen circles of hell with uh, this insubstantial whispering tease of spring, let's embrace something rather than give something up for Lent. I mean, we have given up so much these past 340 days. Let's embrace something. Let's revel in our fleeting physicality with the knowledge that faith brings of a continuing and everlasting life. Amen. Let's pray. Help us in holding your hope, O sacred one, because the nations still rage in their follies and wisdom has been derailed by authoritarianism and obstructionism the world over. Protect those in harm's way, including us, from the wrong uses of power, the small and large tyrannies, the practice of the big lie. Cause us to feel in our bones the sorrows of the whole bent world and then persuade us to the healing. As you give ourselves, as you give yourself to us, so may we give ourselves to those who are without hope, to those who cry mercy. In the name of Jesus, the human one. Let this holy and isolated season of Lent be a time of grace and peace for us and for all the world, despite the tiny lurking dangers, despite the mutations, despite the pandemic. In the name of Jesus, who knew all about lurking dangers. Amen. Let's begin our Lenten journey in the year 2021.